Everyone cool? I will call the meeting to order, and I would ask if you'd stand if you're able and join with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we are extraordinarily pleased to start off the meeting tonight um, by inviting the Middleborough's Division Six state champion football team down. And coach, if you have a seat, we just want to take some time and thank you guys. Uh, no problem. You guys had a fantastic season. And um, I hope all of you are, are, are as proud of yourselves as we are of you. We talked about this at the last meeting, and you guys weren't able to be here at the last meeting. So we wanted to, to you guys to be here and recognize you for the outstanding season, the outstanding efforts. Um, as I said in my statements in the Gazette, you went through some adversity during the season, and I think that made you even stronger and better. Uh, you really tested your mettle, and you came out on top, and you beat a lot of really tough teams. Uh, I was there watching, and uh, unbelievable some of the plays and uh, some of the hardships that you went through to get to those moments uh, make it all the more worthwhile. So, and I know many of the, many of the school committee members were there at games and attended, um, but congratulations, state champs. Nobody else can say that. So, well, there are some other teams that can say that, but Middleborough can say that for the first time in 34 years. When I was a senior in high school, we were state champs, and the next year they're state champs, and then I think 83, and not since. So congratulations, you broke a 34-year-old drought. So, Coach, thank you and welcome. Does anyone want to say anything or have any questions for Coach? Brian. Make a comment now that my voice is back after the game. Um, I've never yelled so much. I almost, I think I said I almost had a stroke, I think. At one point I had to sit down. It was an interception, clear. I just, I couldn't give up on it. Um, but it's all good. Uh, you know, I, I that game, I, I always look at it and I say, there were some perfect things in that game. N not a, I mean, really not a drop ball. Really, I mean, it just, in the championship game. It was amazing, the, the, um, the talent um, some of the acrobatic talent that I saw, it was just incredible. And, I, and um, it's just something to, it's, it's a testament to all the hard work that was put in. I mean, lots and lots of hard work for years. And we're not talking about just this, the high school years. You guys have been playing a long time, long time. Some not as long, but a lot of you have been playing most of your life. And it's amazing. And uh, it's a testament to the hard work, but the hard work always does pay off in the long run. Um, whether it's academics or sports, so keep it up, keep up your the good work. Thank you. Well, we should get a couple things out of the way too. First of all, coach, it was an interception, <laughs> I <agree. laughs> and, and it had to be an interception. And coach, I've had I've known some of these guys for a long time. I had the opportunity to coach some of these guys, and I got to say, what you did with Butte, the uh, ability to run that fast, I have never seen him run that fast in my entire life, and so you should be commended for your hard work and having to put in all the effort you must have He was never going to gonna throw it to O'Brien, I can tell you. <laughs> That's fantastic. Anybody else? No. Guys, uh, we hope those of you who are coming back uh, will repeat next year. We know how hard that is, but I hope that's the goal, and I hope you guys that's work the plan. out. I think we, you just said it, hard work's undefeated, so that's yep. that's how you got to look at it. You got to, you know. I think we, it was a long and trying and kind of a grind as the year goes on, and I think a lot of these guys, the returners, are taking some time off right now to to recover a little bit and play some of their other sports. But I know that once the the new year begins and we come back from from winter break, we'll have some. Uh, some some guys back and lifting some weights and running around and doing some things, getting ready. I know I don't think Brandon Hogan's here right now, but he told me yesterday it's 260 days to to the first to the first game, so he knows that already. So um, I guess we're down to 259. Mr. Chair, yeah. I would be remiss if I don't add a comment. I think one thing that I noticed, and I had my um, kids at the game, and it was quite remarkable. But the one thing that you guys did as a team, I mean, your sportsmanship out there was just outstanding. You could feel it. And you really brought the community together. I heard over and over again that it was the largest audience and largest fan base with the most black and orange of any other school that played in those two days. So I, I think you just need to really think about that, that 
you as a group brought that community into that stadium and really brought them along all year, all year long, all season long. So thank you so much for that. Yes, Ms. Franco, through you, Mr. Chair, the, the MIAA shared with me, they may have shared with you, Coach, that that was the largest small town crowd they had ever seen at Gillette for a Super Bowl. So that was pretty incredible, pretty incredible. So, Greg. Um, I teach at Rockland High School. I've been converting completely to black and orange, and it was fun to discuss with my seniors, who many of you have played against. Um, they were actually genuinely very happy you won. They said you were great competitors, showed great sportsmanship, and your character really shone through, and they were very, very proud of what you had done for the South Shore League. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, guys, and have a nice holiday week, guys. So Thank let's you. see the trophy, and you guys can uh, we'll get a we'll get a nice camera angle on it. Can we do that? <coughs> Where do you want it? Yeah, we'll get a nice picture over here with school committee. So, any players want to say anything? Anyone want to say a few <laughs> syllables? Because you won the game. <laughs> Our next item on the agenda <laughs> is public comment. Does anyone wish to speak on anything not on tonight's agenda? Seeing no one, I will move on. Um, I do want to take this time to welcome Greg. Uh, Greg's been officially sworn in and a member of our committee now. And so, Greg, I wanted to welcome you Thank first you, and Mr. foremost. Jeff. Thank you. Welcome, Greg. Um, or Megan. Your name tag says Megan. Yes, <laughs> I know. The nameplate's nice coming. Job, it takes. <laughs> We've actually lost our nameplate people. They went out of business, so now oh, we had no. to move to another name, nameplate organization. <laughs> Next up on our agenda is Owen. Owen, welcome. Thank you. Uh, yesterday, the student council engaged in a holiday party with the local Conway House. We ate with the families, played games with them, and the children received a gift from uh, Santa. Thank you to the Thomas family for providing the music and some Christmas magic. Uh, we welcome home some alumni tomorrow for the college fair. Over 100 state gyms are coming back to Middleborough to share their college experiences with students. And the winter se uh, sports season has started up with great success. Good luck to all coaches and athletes. The GSA held their uh, holiday party yesterday um, with great results. And Tuesday night marked Sean Newcomb night at MHS. Uh, he came to the basketball game and signed autographs for local Little League and softball players after the game. The concert choir, band, orchestra, and Sachem singers had their holiday concert last Tuesday. A job well done, and uh, it's a testament to the hard work they put in this year. And the student council lock-in will take place on January 6th. Interested students can fill out a permission slip for a night full of fun and uh, lots of leadership. And I just wanted to wish everyone a good holiday break. Uh, see you all in 2018. Thank you. Thank you. And Owen, I said before, you're one of the guys that stick around, especially during holiday break, and you film um, the games going on. And so as much as we appreciate the athletes staying around, we also appreciate you and all the thing that TV Pro does to uh, help make sure those games get on uh, cable and people can see them. So thank you. Any questions for Owen? <coughs> thank you. Have a nice holiday, Owen. Uh, next up is a report from school committee members. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say? Ms. Frank. Unless someone else has something. I'll try to be brief, but brevity is not my middle name. Um, so it is, I knew this. <laughs> so it's with mixed emotions, 
clearly lots of tears, that I'm sharing the news that for personal reasons, I am resigning from my position on the school committee, effective January 1st, 2018. The past four years and nine months have been quite a journey. I have had the distinct pleasure of supporting high student achievement and the incredible work of many, many outstanding leaders and individuals in this district. Would probably be here all night if I was to name each individual that I'd like to thank, but I'd like to mention just a few. Um, first of all, my fellow board members, including Owen, the student representative, thank you for your commitment and your time and your work. I've learned a lot from all of you. Mr. Lynch and Kathy, thank you so much for your tireless leadership, your dedication, and your support of all of us as we you know, pursue good work. Um, Christine Weston, you. you sit over there as kind of an unsung hero, but uh, your dedication to our minutes, they're impeccable. I couldn't do your job. Um, you leave us little sugar treats so when our meetings go late, we have some steam to run on, so thank you for being here every night quietly taking those really important minutes. Um, the administrators, thank you for bringing me insight um, and teaching me so I could do this job effectively. You've all spent lots of time with me. Um, I've asked lots of questions. You've allowed me to come to you and engage in your buildings to really learn so I could do this job with an informed lens. Um, teachers, just thank you for the magic that you make happen every day in the classroom. It's kind of as simple as that. Staff, ESPs, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, custodians, etc. the list goes on. Thank you for your moments of greatness, big and small, that quite often go unseen, honestly. Thank you. And the students, thank you for allowing me to support a part of your journey as lifelong learners. I appreciate this opportunity. Um, and lastly, thank you to the community of Middleborough for electing me to serve in this important role. One of the most humbling experiences of my life was the first time in my role as a school committee member that I handed a student a diploma. Wow, what a powerful moment. It's almost, quite honestly, indescribable. It's difficult to truly comprehend and put to words the amount of work it truly takes from an entire community to support an individual student achievement culminating in a diploma. I was a little bit left speechless that first time, quite honestly. Thank you for those moments. They were quite honestly inspiring. It was a privilege to be part of them. Now, if you'll indulge me, I'm gonna get on my soapbox, but just for a moment, since this will be my final opportunity in this format to do so. According to a 2017 UNESCO report, globally, 264 million children, that's 264 million children, have no access to school, an education or a chance. To put that in perspective, there are approximately 51 million public school students, that's K-12, to in the United States today. Here in the United States, we are very fortunate that education is a right. However, with that right comes a truly awesome responsibility each and every one of us holds. Education is as vital to society, any society, as food, clothing, and shelter. I am confident the District of Middleborough is committed to continuing the great work it is undertaking as defined by its mission, which I'll quote, to foster a culture of excellence within every student in every classroom every day. I urge and I implore the community to continue to engage and truly engage and support by all means this vital work. Thank you very much for allowing me this humbling opportunity to serve this incredible community. I truly thank each and every one of you. It's been a privilege, quite honestly. So stay him strong. Go get them. Thanks, guys. You know, Mo, um, you let us know a couple of weeks ago that you were going to do this, and, and we appreciate that. For those in the community who may not know, Mo's not from here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but she, she's really become an integral part of the community. Um, I, I've had the great opportunity um, 
in essentially my whole time on this committee to sit next to you and to serve with you as chair and co-chair. Um, and I can't tell you enough how much um, you've meant to me and helped me. Um, and I have always appreciated that there have been times when you have brought up um, questions that needed to be asked and sometimes were difficult for people to answer and be a part of. Um, and, you know, we sort of lo look a, a, a lot of things as that happen over and over again and they need to be looked at in a different light and seen differently and you always did that. And um, the community should be proud of your work. Um, and so I thank you. Um, the, the biggest thing I can say to people, and I, I truly mean this, uh, someone like you, for um, a parent who has a child, uh, who's a daughter, that if they could grow up to be half of what you are, Mo, that would be fantastic. So I really appreciate that and thank you for that. Thank you. Anybody else? Brian. Of course I have something to say. I always have something to say. Um, I, I, Mo, I met you before school committee. Um, you were coming into meetings around town, different meetings. You went to an EMS meeting. We we're talking about ambulances. We we're talking about all kinds of things. And the one thing I, when, when I heard you were going to run, I said, oh, good. Because the key to serving in any capacity is always that you have to seek knowledge. And I saw that in you at those other places. I've seen it here as you've served. The, to, be the, to be the seeker of knowledge, you have to have that knowledge before you make an informed decision. More people should do that. I try to do it as much as I can. I forget it every once in a while, and sometimes I'm reminded. I think you've reminded me a few times of, oops, I kind of missed that one. I should have thought of that one. That's when I say the seeker of knowledge, and I'm sure you'll continue to seek knowledge wherever you are and however you serve, because I'm sure you'll serve your community in other ways in other places sometimes. So I, I just wish you luck, and I, uh, I will continue to seek knowledge as well. Thank you. Great. So, Mo, I'm sad, saddened to hear you resign. Um, I've only been on the board with you for about just over a year now, but I admire your energy, the dedication you have to the students, um, your willingness to speak your mind. You're always willing to tell people, even if that's not what they want to hear, you're willing to say it, and that's, that's hard to do. And I, we're going to be worse off not having you around. So we'll... So good luck with your new, your com new community is lucky to get you. Thank you. There's a rock star waiting for this chair. They've been waiting for this moment, so just wait. <laughs> it's a big chair. It's a big chair. Thanks, Mo. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I could. Please, Mr. Lynch. Mo, thank you very much for your service to the town of Middleborough. Um, I know that you have a set of core values that, that are beyond a belief, to, as far as I'm concerned, as a school committee member. Uh, what I have seen of you is that you have high expectations for everyone, uh, obviously including yourself and your children from your conversations with me, but it, it goes, it's pervasive, it goes throughout the district, and I think that's part of the reason you're sitting on this board, because you do have ex high expectations for the Middleborough Public Schools and those employees that work in it. You also have a piece of ownership. You think you believe in ownership. You believe that, that I should own my job, that Kathy Piatelli should own her job, that we all have jobs to do, including school committee members, and that we all need that ownership. We call it Bill Belichick, if you will, or a Bill Belichickian, but we, if we all do our jobs and own our jobs, and that core value is beyond anything. Uh, and I think, finally, the respect. Um, even the difficult conversations we've had sitting here uh, with administrators, with myself, with anyone, whatever you've done, it's been done with respect. It's been done uh, with respect due to the people who are sitting here, but it's been done in, in the air sometimes of cognitive dissonance. You have to create uh, a, the situation where if you have questions, and as, as Greg mentioned, you, difficult conversations and difficult questions, you were never afraid to ask them, So, and I do appreciate that. because. And you've said that to me after meetings sometimes, you know, I'm sorry if I had to say that, but I had to say that, and that's fine, and that's, I think that's important, and it's an important voice to have on a school committee, and uh, it was always done with respect. So I think you have those guiding principles um, and those high core values, and, and I've always respected that in you, and, and hopefully that continues as you move on. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Thank you, Mo. Um, next up on our agenda is Mr. Catino. Mr. Catino.
Good evening. Uh, I'd like to wish you all uh, happy holidays and Merry Christmas or whatever you celebrate. Um, it's, uh, it's been an interesting year. Uh, Mrs. Franco, uh, you will be missed. There's no doubt. I, get, I think that uh, you've, you've been at every school, well, you've been on the school committee since I've been the union president and since I was actually the vice president too and came with Lynn Sullivan. Um, you've been here, so it's been quite a long time and a long journey for you. So. Uh, I wish you well and everything you're going to do. Um, I don't have anything else, so. Well, Mr. Katina, we hope you have a nice uh, vacation and uh, get to spend some time with your family and having a good time. Also, it's going to be resting. Um, <laughs> I have I have my treatment next week, so that's it's every three weeks. So, but I'm down to the last year, I think, so long as everything goes well, because what's left of the tumor is dead tissue. So, you that's, uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Katina. Um, I'll turn it over to the superintendent for the superintendent's report. Well, under recognition, I, what it's actually not on my report, but I did um, send a note off to the Gazette this week, um, if any of you had a, have had a chance to read it. Uh, it was with the help of Dr. Melanie Gates and Sean Siciliano and the administrative team trying to put together a summary of everything at this time of year that the Middleborough Public School students have done, whether it be student council or faculty, um, and done to give back to the community. So if you have a chance to read it, it's uh, under recognition. I won't read it in front of everybody, but it's just, uh, it's about a thousand word little dissertation, if you will. But it is just a summary of, of not all of the things, but many of the things, many featured items uh, of the activities that if you have children in the school system, you know that are going on. Uh, but if you don't know they're going on, they are going on. They go on every year. Uh, they don't, they're not just around Thanksgiving and Christmas too, or the holiday break. Uh, they go throughout the year. But it's just a sort of a summary uh, and a thank you back to the community for, for all that's what the students and the staff have done with a recognition for them. So why don't you get a chance to read that? If you would in the Gazette, whether it be online or in your in your hard copy that you get at your houses. Uh, but I wanted to, to note that under recognition. So, and thank you again to Dr. Gates and Sean Siciliano for putting that together with the administrative team. Uh, that summary. Um, thank you. And I will move on uh, to my report. First on my report, obviously, was the Middlebrook High School team, and congratulations to them, state champs. Obviously, they were here. They're gone. But uh, very important uh, occurrence in this year's uh, school year. The next item is Sean Newcomb night, which Owen touched on and, and which is also featured in the, in the Gazette this week uh, with a lot of nice pictures, also featured in the Enterprise. There's a lot of nice press coverage on it. To Bill Breen, a teach, Spanish teacher at Middlebrook High School, for organizing that, putting that together, working with the selectmen to have uh, that last Tuesday, February 19th, mentioned as Sean Newcomb Day in Middleborough. There was a declaration and a proclamation. Um, I think we had, uh, is a congressman? Um, also sent out a proclamation, a, re a resolution. So it was Sean Newcomb Day. He's a Middleborough High School grad, obviously. He's somebody that went on to the University of Hartford um, and really developed and got bigger and stronger. And uh, the folks in the uh, national press started to notice him and recognize him, and he went on. And he was eventually drafted uh, first round by the Atlanta Braves, uh, no, by the Anaheim Angels. Uh, and then was traded for, a, for a, the number one shortstop to the Atlanta Braves, became their number one. Spent about a year uh, prepping and getting ready and had a chance to go from double AA, A, triple A to the majors this year and I believe played from July on yeah. and will return to the, had 107 or 108 strikeouts, but will return to the majors next year and, um, uh, and he's a great representative for Middleborough. He was happy to be here. You could see that. I know Mo had a chance to be there. I know Rich had a chance to be there. I'm not sure if anyone else had the chance to be there, but um, it was a really great night. It was a fun night. It was done at halftime. He went up to the auditorium uh, and he signed autographs for all the kids and signed shirts and hats. I know some older people that were collecting autographs for their grandchildren. Uh, I also saw the Abington Junior Varsity team go up and take selfies and take pictures with him. Uh, so it, really, it was really a nice night. It's nice. We don't have a lot of students that make the big leagues from Middleborough, um, and he's really made the big leagues. So we congratulate Sean Newcomb and uh, certainly recognize Sean Newcomb Day, which was last Tuesday. And I'm glad that Bill Breen organized that. Um, there was some question about his, his Little League number was retired, and we certainly as a high school honored his number. Uh, we didn't technically retire it. We did honor it and uh, move on from there. So um, that was a great night. So we do appreciate that. Do you want to mention, Mr. Lynch, that yep. I did have a conversation with uh, Sean's family 
and Sean's family was very pleased at what happened and I wanted to uh, thank Mr. Brannigan and everybody and Mr. Breen and everybody at the high school and you Mr. Lynch for the way it was done. They thought it was fantastic and they themselves had as much fun as I'm sure Sean did. So it was nice. Thank you. Uh, next item is the 21st Century Learning Conference and I would invite uh, Mr. Brannigan to come on down. And I know that uh, Sean Siciliano is going to come down and join him. Um, I don't think Adam Pelletier could make it this evening. He's in the room. Is he coming out? <laughs> there he is. Sean, before we um, talk about this, can I ask one question? I um, mean, I just want to make sure I'm correct. On the website, I know we're going to talk about the website later, there is an opportunity for people to buy state championship football gear. Is that still up, and how long will that be up for? I don't know the exact date. I can look it up in a minute. I believe it's uh, December 24th at midnight. Okay. I believe is the last day you can order that. So um, they open they open that store through Grogan Marciano, which is the guy that does our all of our other athletic stores. Um, so that's one of the things. And they also have the football team and the cheerleading team. Um, they also have individual stores. So, so yeah. that's this weekend if anyone wants to get it and be a part of it. So fantastic. And also, Mr. Chair, if anyone ordered uh, swag from the last time, the last time the store was open, that has now been delivered to the high school and is, is individually bagged for anyone who did order. I was able to get my, my order today, which was great. It's so. in the front office uh, at the high school. In the front so office at the high school. The Thank you. So if you did make an order. So... Mr. Brannigan and Mr. Siciliano, who, who did a lot of organizing for this 21st Century Learning Conference, are here to, just to talk about what it was and what kind of day they, it was. And uh, I know that uh, from all accounts, including uh, a student data that was taken at the end of the day, I know there were 300 and almost 400 uh, surveys that were returned. Um, they can give you some feedback. So a summary of the day and some feedback from the day and plans for the future. So welcome, thank Mr. Brannigan. Welcome, Mr. Mr. Siciliano. Just to, um, Mo, thank you so much for the support of our kids and of us and holding us accountable and um, ensuring the fact that we are working hard for the children in this town. So it's been an honor to work with you and for you and to just partner with you. So we're gonna miss you in Middleborough. So thank you very much for everything. Um, we're really excited to share with you the product that really came from um, the totality of the TV production class, especially Sean Rutledge, a member of the class of 2018 with the leadership of Sean Siciliano and of course, Mr. Pelletier as well, of really putting together a, a, a really, I think a, a great representation of what this conference was. This um, initiative started in March of 2017 with a professional development day of really having our faculty begin to look at what is a 21st century learner need um, and how do they survive in the real world. Um, thus the theme of survivor came to life and from there a team of teachers, um, Norm Reynolds, um, Alan Ward, TJ Smith, Jessica Harris, Vicki Miles, and of course Sean and myself uh, became the 21st Century Learning Committee. And this team of teachers worked um, throughout the spring into the summer um, and throughout the fall working with teachers, creating the community partnerships. And the charge for every member of the faculty was is either they had to bring something to the conference where they could present something or they had to go out and try to find a community partner and teachers collaborated they partnered um, and boy did we have one heck of a conference um, and on november 9th we um, had a very different day at middleborough high school um, where our students came in and they engaged in a professional conference like many of us would attend where they chose workshops, and you'll see some of that. Um, they evaluated, and they were asked to dress for success. And it was interesting because many of them had chosen their workshops ahead of time, not many, all of them did. So they knew what kind of workshop they were gonna go into, and that dictated their kind of attire that day, which we thought was really quite exciting. Um, I wanna thank Alyssa Beard, um, who is really just a wonderful, wonderful educator here in Middleborough, who gave her time to come up to the high school to talk about her experience on the American Ninja Warrior and the whole thing about finding your inner ninja. Um, and I thank you to Mr. Thompson for helping us make that happen to relieve her time. So um, without further ado, really, we'll have you see exactly what the 21st Century Learning Conference was. Uh, 
uh, 21st Century Learning Conference was an experience that we were so excited to bring to our school. It was an opportunity to engage our students in a professional conference that any profession may be a part of, where you go to a conference, you choose workshops that are an interest to you, and they always have a goal in mind of what you would come out at the end of the conference. The process for signing up for our workshops was very simple. We had to go online to a website called shged.com and then we were able to pick all the classes that we were interested in. And I really liked that because it gave me like the opportunity to really like lock in on what I want to know and it's not just what I get placed in. So that felt that felt pretty good. and we really had to focus on 21st century skills, what happens when our students leave us, and what are those essential skills that students need to know in order to survive a 21st century world. For us here at Middleborough High School, creating this conference for our students to engage them in a different type of learning for a day, to be able to engage them in skills potentially they may not learn in a classroom on a day-to-day -day basis, but really to create an environment that you could take a school day and have a very different learning um, opportunity for our students. So in the Talk Your Way Into a Job workshop, we pretty much learned about tons of different skills that you can use to effectively be interviewed by someone and how to get a job. In our 911 with the emergency workshop, we had two dispatchers come in and they talked to us about different emergency calls and what you should do in that situation. We saw like a real life polygraph being taken. I thought that was very cool because we could like be in the mind of like how a criminal sees it and how it can be like used in actual like law investigation. My favorite workshop was how to be a team player because it taught us to work with others and allowed us to be active in the morning and play games and have a lot of fun while trying to work together. We got blindfolded and we had to like talk to each other and build stuff and work together. If some people are thinking more about themselves than being in a team then it doesn't really it just doesn't work out as well. The Finding Your Inner Ninja workshop with Ms. Beard taught me how to overcome obstacles and be more confident in everything I do. The focus of my workshop was more on figuring out a five to ten year plan, what you want to do, how you're going to get there, how you're going to face the, some of the fears that you have that might stand in your way of getting there. Mrs. Beard taught me that if you set goals and have determination and perseverance with those goals, anything is possible. I want students to know and take away that they don't have to decide on anything right now. Just having some inspiration and realizing that people around them are there to support them in reaching some of those goals and that they can find success in even the smallest parts of life. Well, one of the really cool workshops that I attended was self-defense. And in that class, we learned different ways to defend yourself before you even have to touch the person. One thing that I took away from my self-defense workshop was that the best way to defend yourself is to believe that you can defend yourself. I'd like them to have some self-defense skills, and I'd like them to understand that there is something they can do if they ever get into a physical situation, hopefully give them the confidence to excel at other things in life. We want them to not feel so uh, trapped in the norm. Find out, and Master Major mentioned to find your passion, follow it, and make, make a living out of it. I think um, this conference, I hope, will become an event that we will do um, every year. And the reasoning for that is, is that it allows for our students to become part of a process, to, to share with us what are the things that they really want to learn about that maybe we can't do in a curriculum, in a science class or a history class or a math class, but really to be able to bring, make sure that we're providing a very robust education on all levels, not just on the day-to-day -day operation, but really making sure that our students have something really um, interesting and unique to our school. 
So for us, that 21st Century Learning Conference was really the breaking ground on how do you engage students differently in school and how do you take a school day and make it something very, very different. I, I think this program would never have been brought to life if it wasn't for the commitment of the high school faculty as well as the engagement of so many community partners that really wanted to come in and share their story or share their passion or share their expertise with our students. We as high school teachers have passion about what we do, but sometimes you can bring in somebody who also has passion in a very, very different field and students can see that in, in real time in front of them, teaching and presenting. I think that means a, re a big difference for them, especially going off into the world where you do need to be in many ways progressive in how you learn and creative and how to be able to really put yourself into a position where you will be noticed um, for those jobs and for those in engagements of professional life. Well, I hope that Middleborough continues to do this because I think it's, it's great networking too for the kids to see what you can do beyond high school, beyond graduation, beyond even if you don't necessarily want to go to college, maybe it will spark an interest for them. In the different workshops, we learned many different skills that we can use not just in school, but like out of school too, and like for the rest of our lives. So. Taught me life skills outside of school that I can use later in life too, and I found that to be very helpful. I really liked it, and I hope we do more of them. television production and as I said Mr. Sassiano and Mr. Pelletier that on the day of the conference we had a team of students who served as the media team that had press passes that um, actually captured a lot of the many workshops and uh, activities of the day. Um, it's really important to note that that 21st Century Learning Committee, um, each of us had a very different, unique piece of that puzzle of putting things together from our own backgrounds and experiences and, and really a, a, a real kind of shout out to Sean for his background in technology because that online program um, was not easy to do. Um, and because of Sean's background, he added such a compliment to a team of teachers that had a vision, but the, the real nuts and bolts of some of those pieces just would have been even more challenging to do. It's important to note that, as Mr. Lynch had shared, that at the end of the day, we had launched a survey to the entire student body, and we had asked them to engage in that survey. And we had over 400 students reply. And I can tell you, I don't think we've ever had that many students in one moment say that they absolutely had one of the greatest days of their school journey. Um, there were students who said that it was by far the best day they've ever had, and they learned more about things they were actually going to use than, um, than some of the things they do on a day to day. Um, and just really some good compliment about really make sure we do it again. Um, and I think that's uh, a success for the faculty because they really um, put a lot of energy into this and they bought into a plan of saying we have no idea what this is going to look like, but it really came out to be a really great day from a very special lunch that we did as you would go to a professional conference. We had a uh, cookie party <laughs> um, in the middle of the morning as that break you would have in a conference and the parents of Middleborough High School came through once again and we had probably almost 3,000 cookies in the cafeteria um, for students to go through and grab a bite to eat before they went off to that next workshop um, and it was just a unbelievable day um, so just a thank you to the community partners and we can answer any questions you may have about the day or comments well I, I just want to say thank you I'm uh, you know my son attended the conference it was all he talked about he really enjoyed it I did have um, the opportunity right after the conference to transport a bunch of kids to a different place and that's all they talked about and how much they thoroughly enjoyed it and how uh, for them it, it was I think it was that uniqueness and something they don't get and there was a lot of conversation about back to me about is this what really happens in a conference like when you go to a conference to, to you know do you do and it was talking about yeah that these things happen you go to various workshops that you pick and you know you're choosing the conference based on what you want to learn about and um, I think that the biggest thing a lot of them took away from it was that we're all still learning and learning doesn't end when school ends we continue to go to these conferences and we continue to be part of it because it's it's part of our own professional practice and it's part of our desire to learn so
Chair. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm notorious for saying where does it show up on an MCAT score or a PARC score, but I'm not saying that anymore because I see these things and and when I see students, young adults saying, you know, they're, they're, they're seeing the life skills and how it's being applied. So I know they're applying it to more than just what they, whether it was uh, the weather warrior or the ninja warrior, um, they're all warriors. And uh, I, I see that as that confidence. When you get that confidence, I saw confidence in what those students were saying. So that was really awesome to see. And that always translates into confidence in the classroom. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna start, stop saying that, where does it show up on an MCAS? Because it shows up a lot. You just don't see it. It is not a number that assigns to it. But uh, I thought that was awesome. Uh, I too had a young, uh, adult in in the the program and he explained it as well and he's he's telling me I'm like so tell me what it, so he he's all excited about it learning he happened to be in one of the car the how to buy a car start to finish oh that whole piece and he was explaining to me because he's seen me negotiate a few times but he learned the finer points which I thought was awesome so these programs are just phenomenal um, I don't want anyone to think at home if you if you see this or see the video online because um, they are online, um, that the students just had a day out of the classroom because they were learning and they learned a lot. So uh, thank you and thank you for pr producing this and everyone, all the teachers that put in, uh, it's just a lot of work uh, for a great day. I know we promised not to keep just saying thank you because that would take up the rest of the evening, but outstanding. And I think what I think we need to kind of summarize for the community is, and it's so consistent in this district and in your building, is that you, you innovate. There's an idea. You engage everybody in. It's like all in. There's this really cool idea. How do we pull it off? Because it's one thing to have a lot of great ideas and sit around thinking about, oh, these are great ideas, and never take that leap. And you do it over and over, whether it's the curriculum, how you engage your teachers engage in the classroom and this is just another example of that those ideas then innovating and bringing those to life and then refining those for the next year and coming up with new ideas so thank you very much i think it's one of the points that we often i know i often hear out in the community is people want to talk about life skills you know how do we how, how do we teach kids certain things that they, you know, they don't necessarily learn in English class or math class. And I think the biggest thing is we do so in different ways. Uh, the superintendent and I uh, had a conversation with a group of people about um, people taking, um, you know, practical skills about knowing about what goes on in government and everything like that. And we explained to them that we do that in different ways. It, you know, we don't name it as such, but the kids all get a piece of it and a part of it. And I think that this is a perfect example. You, you gave kids the opportunity to learn things that they wanted to learn and that they had the opportunity to pick and choose from. And um, I think to some extent, the only downside to it was uh, a lot of the kids wanted to choose other things, but ha I think they had the option of four. And so, you know, they had hoped to have more, but that was the pieces that they got. So it was fantastic. In that opportunity we had, Mr. Chair, we, with the, we sat in front of a group of, that had some, I don't know, some misinformation about what we were doing. We don't teach civics anymore. Well, we live it, too, with a, a student <laughs> council that's 250-plus students, correct? Um, we also have it. We also teach it civics in classes. The, the feeling that we don't say the Pledge of Allegiance anymore. We say it every morning, and, and we do in all of our schools. And So that there are some people out there that have these misconceptions about what actually goes on in school anymore. So, so any type of, of sort of fact-finding, one of these ideas, I'm to see people saying, as, as Mr. Givinoni said, they did that in school. Well, there's a lot of valuable information. I saw some information. Just even the, just the flashes up there about credit score. How many how many kids learn about credit scores and the importance of credit scores? So a lot of those life pr practical skills. I was able to attend one of the workshops near the end and and uh, work with Mr. Breen and a representative from UMass Dartmouth about those simple job skills that they need to go in and interview for a job at Hannaford's or a job at McDonald's or a job because they're competitive markets and what they need and what they need to be able to do uh, and what skills they need for particular jobs. If they want to be a cashier at Hannaford's, they have to have communication skills. And if they don't want to communicate, they're not going to get that job. So that was really practical, those, those applications. There was some, some, something about learning how to tie a tie at the end, but that was just a lot of fun we had with a bunch of kids that already knew how to tie ties. They were able to show the other kids, so that was actually good. So, but thank you. It was very well done. I was able to attend that day a little bit, and uh, 
I, I got the feel, the buzz, the positive buzz, positive vibe from that day. So thank you very much. And I know the hard work that Sean put in on the sort of the grunt work that had to go about this, the survey and everything else. So we do appreciate that. I'm going to keep Sean around for uh, one of the next couple items here. So Sean, if you could stay, and Mr. Branning, and your excuse. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks. So as I continue with my report, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to mention the fact that uh, Mrs. Piatelli could not be here tonight, but her FY19 budget subcommittee meeting update would be that we are meeting on the 27th is the first initial sort of salvo of the formal budget subcommittee, which is going to consist of yourself and Mr. Stevens. Um, I don't know if that needs to be voted on this evening, but uh, I know it's appointed anyways from you, Mr. Chair. So we move forward with that. At this point, uh, we have met with each of the individual principals thus far for some sort of uh, cursory uh, requests and some get a feeling from what each building is looking for um, faculty <coughs> staff wise faculty wise program program wise um, so that we have a good idea to give the budget subcommittee a summary thus far um, and then we move forward with with certainly the the nuts and bolts is, is again Ms. Franco again how many years did you serve in the budget subcommittee four years and so we do appreciate that too and, and uh, that work but Greg will learn I think very quickly that it's it's not the easiest committee because you do have to set priorities for a district and, and that's an important part of, of what you guys do uh, in your role. So that are, those are the next steps for the, for the budget process is meeting on the 27th and beginning that formal process. I know that the town manager is anxious to have a calendar that he will have so that he can present to the selectmen on where he realizes that the school budget is a different animal, uh, but he also wants to get some sort of when we're going to close and so we're going to come up with some dates during that meeting on the 27th and reintroduce at the next school committee meeting the calendar of events um, the budget hearing etc all those things that we have to do by law so um, thank you to that so any questions on that again mrs piatelli could not be here tonight and she's apologizes for not being here so uh, next on my agenda is the website update uh, and sean spoke to us last time i thought it fitting if sean returned again and sort of a gave us an update on sort of the, what, what he's been able to accomplish, he and Dr. Gates have been able to accomplish. I don't know if Dr. Gates wants to join you down here, Sean. It's up to you. Um, but I know that the two of you have been working in concert on this. And I hate to put Dr. Gates on the spot, but she has worked hard on this. And um, so what Sean introduced the last time was, was actually the full implementation of a new website. But what has since occurred is some of the nuts and bolts that have gone on and, and uh, between Sean and Melanie, maybe you could just fill us on some of those nuts and bolts. Thank Sounds you. Good. Yeah, thank you uh, for having me. Um, we, the first time I came to present this to you, we had launched it two and a half hours before. Um, we've come a long way since then. Um, we've done a lot of things. Uh, one of the things that, when we launched this website was keeping it current, keeping it updated always keeping fresh information and giving people a reason to come back for more. Um, and that was one of the things that really drove us to this site. And that's what we're using to kind of keep the theme going and uh, keep the energy and keep the drive in the district. Um, we have been doing P uh, PD with administrators and administrative assistants. Um, we've had two sessions of PD. Uh, it gives us a chance to bring the administrative assistants in, bring the admins in and show them how easy it is to do. And we're trying to put this on them and say, okay, like you guys know what's going on in your building. You know what's coming up. Here's how you can do it and how you, here's how you can keep that content fresh and keep, get that information out to your parents, get that information out to the community. So we had uh, two PDs. We just had one on December 12th, and then we had one back on October 6th. Uh, the first one on October 6th, we went through with uh, how to create a news story, which is uh, down at the bottom here where we're putting all of our information. This is current information uh, that's being uh, processed through. And then in our last PD, we went through how to create a graphic for up here um, through a program called Canva. So we've created these different, we created a school community one. Um, we've created these different slates or slides to get information out because when you load the site, this is, the, this is what you see. You see that information at the top. Um, the nice thing about this site is that it's totally responsive so i'm going to show it to you tonight on a laptop but when i make the window smaller this is kind of a little bit different but this is what you would see with a mobile site so when you make it smaller this top bar goes away and you get this menu that gives you the ability to work across platforms so when you load it on an ipad or when you load it on your phone you're no longer going to have to zoom in like you did on the old site to get to that it's all right here 
and it allows you to get to everything. It is a little bit different when you're in the when you're in the mobile version. That's how every mobile site is. Um, so if you look in the on the bigger site up here, we have the top links. When you makes a, when it gets a little bit smaller, when it goes to the mobile version, uh, you go to the popular links down here, and all of those exact same links are up there. Um, everything's loading. It's all pulling from the same site. It just looks different. So that every inform every piece of information that's on the main site on a desktop version is also on your mobile version. Um, we went through and created, like I said, the graphics, but then kind of getting uh, the administration to help us with creating this content and kind of driving the driving the information forward. Uh, Derek's one of the one of the principals over at Berkeley, and he's putting his he he was a blogger. He always had his blog. And it was a. It was, we met with him, and we were like, "All right, we want you, we want you to move to the site. We want you to do everything on the site." And he did. He took the leap. His last post was the middle of November on his blog, and it says, "Check out the website. That's where I'm doing everything now." And he's come through, and he's put the the news stories up, and uh, we've tied Twitter into all this. We put each uh, Twitter account on each side of the on the side of each school, and then on the district page. Uh, Mr. Lynch is making a strong a strong pull for Twitter now. Uh, if you don't, if you don't follow him, if you don't follow him, these two yep. folks here. Um, but we're using Twitter to constantly update uh, the community on what's going on. It's it's no, we're no longer in that stage where sometimes by the time they get that phone call, Scan Middleborough's already posted it on Facebook. The police department's already posted it on Facebook. So we're we're trying to get that. We're trying to get out there and be the first ones. And I worked in news, and you always want to be the first one to say something. So using our using our formal Twitter account is kind of the way to get out there and and get that information. So. What? On Twitter, the, the current Twitter one. It's already up. You took it tonight. Oh yeah, I posted it in the back. <laughs> so. Yeah, that picture was taken a few moments ago here in this meeting. So. Any questions about the site or? I just want to say to both of you, as, we're, as you're having the conversation, I'm going through my mobile phone to look at it, but um, I couldn't do that before. The, the website did not work on my mobile phone. I, um, I never would go to the website of my mobile. I would always go to the app. Um, and the app only gives you, as you guys know, a, a small piece of what happens. This is, um, you know, the only real changes from the mobile phone to this is essentially everything on the side with Twitter and everything goes on the bottom and that's it and you get access to everything it's easy to maneuver around um, and so thank you very much I mean you know there's there's times when I'll be out someplace and somebody will ask me a question I, and I know it's on the website and I couldn't access it because you couldn't do anything with the mobile when you were in a mobile on a phone and so I had to tell people I'll get back to you. But now, if somebody asks me a question, I can figure it out pretty quickly and show it to them and, and tell them that's where it is. And so that, thank you. That was one of the big things that when we moved to this was that it was a totally responsive and that we, we still have the app, but there's there's things that this site has that that app just can't pull. Um, and when you load that mobile version, you're seeing those pictures at the top. This slide shows what would load first. And then you see the announcements underneath that. Uh, that's designed to get the information that's most important out there. Uh, our Twitter is important, but if you follow us on Twitter, then you probably have already looked at Twitter on your phone. Um, so having that mobile version and stacking those things in that way uh, drives home the message of getting information out. And, and the app, you know, the app is really there for, in my mind, for individual schools. And so especially the letting you know what's going, you know, like sending you the push and letting you know the pieces. And, I, you know, I think, you know, in my life, things have become easier between this and also, for example, on the athletic site, we've added the MIA piece. And I could just, I, I downloaded that app. And all I have to do is hit Middleborough as my favorite school, and I can press a button, and everything populates on my calendar for the That's event. That's a great app. And should the event change, like, you know, we've gone through games that were supposed to start at 6.30, but they had to be moved to 7.00. They send you a push notification that that's going to change, and it changes in your calendar too. So it's fantastic. So everything, everything that Ryan or the athletic director of the high school books is all through the MIAA. So once we set, if we set that it's a home game, once the opposing team, once let's say Attleboro approves the game, automatically goes up. Um, it also has departure times for buses right on the app. It has scores right on the app, um, and that's just. 
an easy way for parents to get the information. And Mr. Silvio, if the game's canceled, he goes to the MIA, game's canceled immediately. Push alerts if you've signed up for him, or if you go and check what time the game is, it says the game's canceled. And that's all uh, right on the MIA, which is a lot more user-friendly uh, with, the, with the new version. And they're also going through some updates, too. And one of the things I want to say, especially about the MIA app, is Ryan really works hard to update that. You know, there's many times, for example, at Chanukah night, we played Abington. So the app lists every school in the state. So I can go to Abington, I can look up their basketball team, see what their record was going into the game. It's not there because they're not updating the app. Everything that we're doing, we're updating immediately in mm -hmm. real time. And especially in, in some of the apps, if you go through some of the, you can see who scored, yep. um, what time they scored in the game and everything like that. It's, it's a fun way to become involved. There's the rosters and everything like that. So it, it gives kids an opportunity. And, and it applies the, to everybody, not just varsity. It applies yep. to freshmen. It applies to JV, and that's the fun part of it. The only uh, hiccup that I noticed that Mr. Sylvia explained to me is that the ice hockey team, if you click on our ice hockey schedule, it's not listed. But if you go to Hall, it's listed under them because right. Hall's the host school for ice hockey. Um, so they have the way the MIA, because it's computer programmed, you can't put it on two schools. So uh, if you're looking for the ice hockey schedule, it's on the Hall site. Um, it's also on MET. It pulls this last seven days. So, but. And uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, Sean, you had also, and you and Melanie, when I met with you the other day, I met with them a couple of times the last couple of weeks to, to get some assistance, technological, technological assistance. But we also talked about the, the current app that we have, and that that may be something that is uh, that goes away at some point. Can you explain why we just get rid of that app? I think we've already sort of stated it, but if you wouldn't mind sharing that. Yeah, so with the with the old site, the app was the mobile version. Um, there wasn't, when you looked at our old site, it wasn't mobile friendly. And when the when that site was made, it wasn't meant to be mobile friendly because mobile wasn't a thing. Um, and then when we moved to this new theme, now everything you do, the, the screen changes sizes, the menus change, the buttons change size, the text gets bigger, things move where they're supposed to move, all in this new theme that we've updated to. And with the app, it's, it's pulling information, and the app is directly connected to the website. But it's only pulling certain information, and it's only pulling certain tags, or it's only pulling certain sections. Um, but those are all things that you can get right from, right from our, from our web page. So... So the web page in its on its site on an iPhone is really a mobile app. Exactly. Yeah. It's, but a, yeah. even a better mobile app than what we had before. Yeah, mobile friendly. Exactly. And I know that, Mr. Chair, you were looking for that mobile app when we went to the new website to get right. so the mobile app wasn't up. Right. But now we have almost and a that's better the, a the better other problem. I understand from the mobile app, which is this: that, for example, if there's a bug, we have no control of that bug until the company that owns the application process updates it. Exactly. So, for example, when we started essentially the first month of the school year with no mobile app because they didn't update it. Uh, so they had an Apple, issue with Apple. They were right. going through trying to get it approved, and there was a. And there so was a this list we can change, as as Brian pointed out, momentarily. And, and it makes more sense. Exactly. And this was actually an affordable approach to going with this because we had already worked with a company called Blackboard Connect, who are the sort of the mother company of this, this, this mobile oh, this site, they this purchased, website. They purchased the other company. Uh, School Wires was our website. Uh, and then Blackboard acquired School Wires. So we switched over to, we didn't switch over, we stayed with School Wires, which was acquired by Blackboard. So. So it was actually easier for the district and more affordable, which worked out well. So There's also the Blackboard Connect feature, too, which uh, is the all-call program that we use. So in order to do an all-call, we use Blackboard Connect. But we've done some upgrades with that program so that you might see a lot more emails being pushed out. And uh, we're going to try and update our contact information with how we can get in contact with people. Because um, maybe sometimes phone calls isn't the best answer. Maybe it's a text message. Maybe it's an email. And that's something that we're looking at and that we're going to kind of start rolling out and figuring out what, what works best. And, and this is all, all about how we as a school system more effectively engage our community, our school community and our com larger community um, in general with, <coughs> with getting our news out. It's important that we get our news out first, and that's good. But it's also important that we get our news out 
uh, in, a, in a very timely manner so that folks know. Uh, there are always going to be emergency outreaches with Blackboard Connects, those robocalls that we get. Um, but we're trying to go to uh, an opportunity for people to get their information <laughs> from other sources, including tweets, including uh, emails, uh, because you're not next to your home phone all the time or you're not next to your mobile phone all the time, but most times you have a way to get quickly to, to an area. So we thank uh, Sean and Melanie for their hard work in this area through the technology department, obviously also, uh, but they've really done the grunt work moving forward here. So we do thank them for that. So if anybody has any other questions? Cool. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We do appreciate it. <clears throat> Moving on to my report, Mr. Chair. Uh, the next item is the strategy for continuous district improvement. As you know, this is something that we developed through the last year that you approved the, the endorsed the strategy for continuous district improvement. Um, in that work, uh, as you know, we, we identified three big rocks that need to be rolled as far as this district goes. Uh, and they came in the form of what's called strategic objectives. Uh, they are in the culture of innovation and achievement the culture of excellence, and the culture of well-being. Just wanted to give you an update on where we are developing action plans for each of these goals. Uh, each of these goals has its own four sub-goals. Uh, we have a group of, of uh, administrators and, and faculty members who have agreed to serve on three committees, each under one of each of these rocks, these big rocks, these goals, these strategic objectives. And each of these committees have met in June, in August, in September, in October, and continue to develop these action plans that you have in your Dropbox. Um, I would ask, this is uh, the vetting process, that you look through them. If you have anything to add, any input you'd like to provide, um, this is an opportunity for you to sort of vet through those. Those are not, I don't, I think Ann did, maybe gave you PDF comment, co uh, but I can also get you uh, the Google Docs so that you can add if you'd like, uh, as long as you <laughs> indicate that it's something that you edited. And well, I think we'll have some indication of that anyways through, uh, through the process. But if you'd like to add anything to this, these are, these are live documents. They'll continue to be live documents. A lot of this work is going on now. Um, a lot of this work may occur down the road. Uh, this becomes part of the budget process. This will be a budget driver this year. Some of the objects, some of the, the opportunities and challenges that some of these objectives face going down the road to complete in five years. So I'd ask that you look at them. Um, you know, feel, please feel free to email me with any questions or discussions. Um, I have these three committees. They're each chaired by a couple of administrators. And uh, the first goal is, for example, is culture of innovation and achievement. And that's uh, Derek Thompson and Marty Gagan. Uh, Andy <laughs> Dizel is on that committee. And there's a number of other administrators on that committee. So they're working on that one. So that's just an example of that team. And uh, Paul is in charge of uh, culture of excellence, right, Paul? You're goal number two. And Paul is involved in that. Um, Melanie, which one are you on? You're, you're involved in number two also. So there's each group of administrators that have met uh, outside of the school day when, as we started the school year. So uh, they continue to work on this. As you know, we've increased the level of administrative team leadership meetings to two a month. And at each once a month, uh, we take up and, and work on these things. And uh, I mentioned the term cognitive dissonance before, that there is some back and forth with this committee and that's what it's all about. It's all about coming to some sort of agreement on what's best for the kids in this district, the students in this district and the staff in this district. So I, I give those to you or provide those to you as an update, but with also with an opportunity for you to vet, to vet this process out if you have any input whatsoever on any of these, um, please do so. Um, it can be in verbal form at a meeting. It can certainly be uh, in written form to me via email. If you have some concerns on how are we going to get this one done or how could we possibly get this one done. And then you look at some of the goals that were already already way in. Uh, culture of well-being, the Family Resource Center has a lot to do with a lot of those uh, goals and a lot of what we're doing in the committee. And uh, so some of them are, are have just as high impact and a little bit easier than others. The whole idea was we, we went through a rubric with all of these and we decided they all had high impact. Um, some have a little bit more of an ease of implementation and some are more difficult. And with those that uh, challenges uh, approach us, the committees are dealing with those and we as a leadership team are gonna continue to deal with that also. So any questions on that in terms of an update? Yes. I wanna just make a quick comment about the Family Resource Center. I happen to 
I happen to be enjoying some of the best buffalo boneless wings in town and overheard a conversation from people, whether they had family members or not, they were discussing this thing called the Family Resource Center and the programs that they're, they're able, that it's available to them. I was shocked by kind of hear, overhearing this while I was climbing on a conversation, but it was great to hear that people know that there's resources there for the community, if, if necessary. And uh, it, was, it was shockingly, ha I was happy that people are able to uh, receive these services that are out there. And so, the Resource just one part. Megan Quirk, um, has an incredible knack of, of collaboration or collaborating uh, and networking with the community. She has worked with several organizations um, and I'd like to certainly mention one, I probably mentioned them before, but the folks at Oak Point, every time she's reached out to the folks at Oak Point, they have been more than willing to help her with school supplies last summer. I think she ended up packing up her Jeep three times with school supplies that came from the folks at Oak Point. Um, so that outre outreach and, and networking that she's able to do uh, certainly has been helpful. And sometimes, you know, the Family Resource Center is, it is individually run really by one individual, but it's that networking that's so important. Uh, and if it weren't for Megan, I don't think it would be as effective. I really don't, because it really sometimes comes down to a person, and that she's the right person for that job, and she's doing a great job. And, and we thank the, the federal Title I grant, which is, fully supports this now, and which is actually, they've, they've done presentations at the Massachusetts Title I conference because they've been recognized that the Family Resource Center and the, then the foundations of it have been recognized by the the state Title I uh, as a very successful program. So we certainly thank Megan, we thank the Family Resource Center, but that is definitely in that culture of excellence under the goal. So thank you. Uh, as we move on here, um, we come up with the calendar, which comes up to you, and hopefully you've been able to, to take a look at some of the data that we'll be able to pull, similar to, well, I think, is, it's, well, hopefully it's what you asked for, uh, to get an idea. Uh, of some of the numbers that we have with regard to comparisons from the day prior to Thanksgiving break in 2016, the day prior to Thanksgiving break in 2017, um, and some of the release days that we've had. Um, First of all, thank you for getting me this data. I, I kind of asked for it because it's, as, as Mo will attest, you got to have the data to make the right decision. And we've actually discussed this um, I think in the previous year when we talked about days off, um, but looking at it, it was, uh, to say it was inconclusive is kind of an interesting comment mm. because some were higher, some were lower, um, and on the different early release days, there are, some were higher, some were lower. But the one I was looking really at is that Thanksgiving number, and the numbers were somewhat trending lower except for one school, but uh, I thought that was interesting thinking with an extra day off this year versus last, would somebody try to sneak something a little early, yeah. and it doesn't appear so, which is good. Right, and last year when we talked about going down to the two days, you were concerned that people would just bag the week, and we would have a, a real issue with attendance, and to see that in four out of the five schools anyways, the attendance was better on the day before Thanksgiving, which became to be Tuesday, yep. and contractually it will be Tuesday, so that was actually a good yeah. good thing. And, so. even on the, and even on the early release days, it, there was no, uh, there was no, um, no jump or something. I was looking to make sure that there was nothing that really jumped out at me that said, wow, you know, maybe we should be rethinking these days, um, which made me feel more comfortable with the calendar that you've presented to us yeah. uh, back in October that we've been looking at for a while. So I'm very happy. I'm, uh, I'm much more comfortable now. Good. The one thing that struck me as sort of interesting was the, um, as far as Columbus Day went. Uh, Columbus Day is sort of, if you will, that last... Um, nice holiday you generally run into before you go. And the number in, at the MEC, although we didn't have, we had incomplete data on before, which is it, it's almost 9%. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, 9% of the kids were absent. That struck me as sort of odd. So I do, I do raise that as a concern. Yeah. And that was the one data point that was significant yeah, yeah. amongst the others, where at that same date, when compared to last year, uh, the Nichols Middle School went from 6.93 absenteeism, which is a school that averages about four and a half to five, and went down to 4.23. And then at Middleborough High School went from 5.03 down to 3.86. So there was improvements when, when you talk about grades six through 12, 
for that for this year's and there are other factors that go in and we've talked about them before with regard to student absenteeism and whether the flu's going around or whether it's sick because we talked about January dates before so there are other sort of factors uh, but if you look at just general numbers um, they're getting a little bit better in the half day this year uh, generally 6 to 12 our largest point of our population and uh, total enrollment is as you can see at the bottom is just for comparison purposes um, if no one objects, my intention is to put um, the, the school calendar on next meeting's agenda. And um, I, I wanted to give people a chance to look at the attendance numbers, and we'll vote it. And that, that gives parents uh, uh, a chance to sort of plan out, you know, try to do it as far in advance as we possibly can so the parents can plan their lives, especially um, the, the my understanding is the recommendation will be similar to this year. And so students will not start prior to Labor Day. Yeah. Yep. And so that will give parents and the knowledge that they need to make some decisions. And Mr. Chair, if there's any more homework that I might do to make your jobs easier, just let me know uh, either tonight or via email, and I can try to get some, some additional data points. I will try to fill in those two missing data points that are on there in terms of the MAC and the HPB with regard to the release day, Columbus Day 2016. Um, and, and uh, working with Katie Goodine in our SIMS data system, um, she's not sure why those would not pull up automatically, but she's, gonna, she's working on it. So, I do, I do want to point out one thing, though, to parents, and especially parents of eighth graders coming in. Although school doesn't start until after Labor Day, all the fall sports programs start uh, two weeks prior to Labor Day. And so it's important for parents to know that, especially if they're coming here for the first time and to the high school for the first time, that if their first child's coming and wants to play a sport, then the expectation is they start about the second to last week, uh, third to last week, excuse me, in, in August and do those two weeks. They have full practice those two weeks and then move into the season pretty much starts right after, um, in some cases, the Tuesday after school begins. Mr. Yeah. Isn't there something that, isn't the MIA set that date how early you can start? Yes. And I think football starts that first day. Yes. Um, do you think Very strict rules from the MIA. Right. Do you think that might be something we might want to put on the calendar, first day of sports, um, practice, et cetera, fall sports um, prep, that's not like in August? Yeah. Yep. Just so pa especially people who don't have knowledge can at least see it and be yeah. part of it. Mm -hmm. I think that would be great. That's a great idea, Brian. You brought it up. I yes. thought it was, hey, if we can find that. I knew because the only reason why I do that was my son said, we can't stop practice early, but we can, we can start training early. Yeah. And, and that's an important point that, that the new AD, Ryan Sylvia, is going to work with captains on before is, is they cannot have, a coach cannot organize practices. Captains can organize trainings. Um, so if captains choose to do that for fitness, et cetera, they can do that. We certainly have a weight program, a fitness program that goes on all summer that students take advantage of. Um, it starts very early in the morning, so we hopefully we'll continue that. But we'll see as we move forward. Again, any other data points, any other homework that I can do to make your lives, uh, make your decision easier? It's never easy when you're determining the next year, but this is a, a good place to start. I think last year we had about six or seven. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so. And that's it for my report, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you very much. Um, next update is MSBA update. The, um, uh, our, uh, the school building committee is meeting this Wednesday. No, the Wednesday after. 27th. 27th. Um, we have to prepare some work to be sent to um, MSBA. Um, and so that will be, and then we also, to be honest with you, the other piece that we're doing is as we progress into the new um, phase, we essentially have to either choose to rehire or get a new architect. And so that's the next step. And the OPM. And the OPM. So um, the, I believe it will be the recommendation of the committee to hire both uh, the same. We are in the process of working out contractually with them. Um, so we're going to present that contract, those two contracts, to the full committee. Um, and, and that Mr. will be, Chair, I believe, a full committee decision on Wednesday. Is that by the MSBA or that just yeah. No, the MSBA gives you guidelines, okay. and as long as you maintain in the guidelines, they're fine. Yeah. And uh, to be honest with you, we've been back and forth with the MSBA, um, asking some questions mm -hmm. and uh, getting some clarification from them. Um, we also have an um, architect who works 
on the building committee with us who does a lot of work for Harvard and she's been a great resource for us to um, throw questions by her and have her tell us how, how they do contracts and so it's been it's been great and as we move into what's called phase four this design development stage um, if we use the same OPM and the same architect or designer uh, then what we sign is an addendum to their original contract as opposed to going a new company now if we had gone to um, a model school we would be going to a different architect and we'd have to go through a different architect but the model school program is no longer um, so that is no longer in play so but the other update as, as you said the meeting is on the 27th There's a working group meeting prior to the larger meeting and um, we'll go from there but we continue and DRA has been doing its homework they've been down here uh, Mr. Brennan I've already been down here probably six seven days working with departments and music department and technology and security and uh, science and math and fine arts and they've been working on the details so the design development so they are they've already in work whether so we're hopefully we'll sign with them because <laughs> we're probably going to owe them some money if we don't and pieces so. have been uh, altered and changed based on what um, staff have asked for and and, and you know and it's been slight movement of rooms here and there to make sure that they meet requirements that people were looking for um, and some are the MSBA came back with us with some requirements that they wanted us to move around and we have so it's those type of things and we'll also have a representative committee going in to meet with the MSBA and meet with our a new group of, of individuals that will be dealing with um, with regard to the to the design development because we go from our our sort of our current liaisons to a new group of liaisons uh, as we move forward into this design development people that are much more familiar with the actual construction design piece of this so um, and we go in to meet them I think the date's been set up I might be January 4th I think it was the last date I saw yeah so we're working on that so. it's actually the night of our meeting so the superintendent and I may have a little trouble because it's set late in the afternoon so we may be getting here just at seven o'clock <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, any questions about MSBA? Um, next item on the agenda is subcommittee assignments. I had a brief conversation with uh, a Greg via email, so I'm going to incorporate his piece. Um, the only assignment, the only update to our assignments is that Greg and I will be doing the um, budget. Um, Greg in the past has served on the finance committee uh, for the town of Middleborough, so it made sense. Um, also, um, we need to start that process sooner. Uh, pretty much everything is going to stay pretty the same, and we're just uh, altering with uh, Greg adding to certain pieces. So I'll have that for us at next meeting. Um, the next hey, item. Mr. Chair, oh, excuse sorry. me. The, those meetings are posted, yes, they and are. they're open meetings, and, and anyone can attend. Any member can attend, and anyone in the public can attend. So, and, and it's, if you know, we try to make them a certain part of the day, so you might be able to attend and maybe learn a little bit about the process as and, we move we forward. we do rotate them. Uh, the first, yep. uh, the, as the superintendent said, there are building committee meetings all afternoon um, on that Wednesday, so we are going to do 10 o'clock on the, on the Wednesday. Um, to be honest with you, Mr. Stevens is a teacher, so he is not going to be available for morning meetings. Um, so most of the meetings will be in the afternoon. And if people want to attend and be a part of them, they will. They, we were just able to get this one in to start and sort of set up our time frame and go from there. So that's that's that piece. Uh, next time on the agenda is consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda is presented this evening. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Abstentions? No, no, no we're all set. Mm -hmm. um, Next time on my agenda is action item. Uh, we had put this on, we had put the superintendent's contract on the last meeting. Uh, it was not voted on the last meeting, uh, primarily because our lawyer uh, did not get me a contract in time that I could give to the committee members to look at. Um, it is uh, not, and in my mind, in this committee's mind, it is not a good thing to vote on anything that you haven't spent time and looked at. So the committee uh, was sent, um, the superintendent's contract and just so everyone understands what the process was um, we had done the superintendent's review after that I met with the committee in executive session and they gave me uh, the ability to begin negotiations with the superintendent over a new contract uh, his contract currently ends this coming uh, June um, 
the committee set parameters. Um, the superintendent and I met. We went back to the committee. We discussed some of the parameters and altered them. Um, and then at our last meeting, I went over with the committee what we had. And the committee seemed pleased with that because we had stayed within the parameters they had sent for me. Uh, the current changes that will be to the superintendent's contract, so everyone's understanding, the length of time for the superintendent's contract will be a five-year contract. Um, one of the things for me, and I think sh should point out, uh, the average uh, superintendent stays in district in Massachusetts currently is less than three years. Um, and so my hope is that the superintendent will last uh, this next contract and that will put him here for eight. Um, and that is, and I hope he wishes to continue beyond that, but it made sense uh, and we wanted to do that. Uh, the superintendent is eligible for up to a 3% raise, uh, but that's based on his successful completion of his review. Uh, the su superintendent's induction uh, course, which he currently takes, will end in a couple of months, and so that will not be included in the new contract. Um, also, um, uh, we added a week's vacation to the superintendent's contract, and that aligns him with the rest of the contracts that we have administratively. So although that's a change for him, it is not a change for what we had with other administrative contracts. And the last uh, piece that was changed that I want people to know about is there is a longevity piece in his contract that after successful completion of five years service, uh, he would be eligible for a longevity bonus. Um, and that is in most of our union contracts. Um, and so we uh, incorporated that language. And the in the notification. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I thank you. And the other piece is if the superintendent wishes to end the contract, moving on to someplace else, or wishes to retire, uh, he must give the committee notice September 1st uh, prior to that he'll be giving us notice for June 30th. So uh, previously, I believe it was 90 days. Mm -hmm. So we extended that to almost uh, nine months. Um, and as far as I can find, that's the lengthiest uh, piece in any superintendent's contract in Massachusetts currently. So uh, I am very pleased with this contract. Um, I think it's fair and equitable. Um, and I also think uh, more than anything else, uh, the superintendent has done a wonderful job for this district. And I know you feel the same way based on his reviews. Um, he has been such an asset to this community I, I personally feel that the approval of the high school is because we have somebody that knows the community and can relate to the community and works hard in the community and people see that. And so uh, Brian has done an outstanding job for us. Um, and this, in my mind, is an extension of that outstanding job and how we reward. Yes, Mr. Steve. Mr. Chair, I just want to say that I, I'm very happy with the contract. Uh, I think. Mr. Lynch has really proven himself to me, at least that he's, he's more than capable. And like you said, his dedication to this new high school project has been outstanding. And I think it's important this five-year deal gives us stability because this is going to be a big change for us. You know, the new high school construction, the moving to the high school, that's going to be a lot of changes. And I think having the stability at this key position is, is, is just a great benefit to us. And also, I think five years is a good time to plan, implement, you know, shepherd things through the system. So I, I'm very happy with the contract. I hope Mr. Lynch is as well. Other questions? Uh, I, Chair would take a motion to approve the contract. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion. I, Mr. Lynch, I will ask you, are you satisfied with the contract? I am. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank uh, you and each member of the committee for your vote of confidence in, in my abilities and in my leadership. And um, hopefully I won't steer you wrong and we'll continue. I, I definitely want to see this high school project through. Um, I definitely do. And I think this five years allows us to do that. And uh, I thank you very much again for your for your your leadership as school committee members and your vote of confidence in my leadership. And, and uh, I certainly want to uh, pass that down to the administrative team because they're a hard-working group of individuals and, and every every faculty and staff member in this district uh, are committed to student improvement and we need to to keep on that uh, keep on doing that so I thank you very much again for your, uh, your vote of confidence in your contract offer and I'm flattered by it and I will certainly sign it this evening so 
Any other discussion? Anyone in the audience have any questions? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It's four yes and one abstention. So if no one objects, I'm going to take this time and sign the contract right now. Is the second twenty first? I'm a second. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey. Does anyone else have anything else they wish to uh, bring up before we close out our meeting? I also see Richard Gillis in the office, uh, in the uh, in the audience. I'd like to thank him also too, because uh, I certainly appreciate the part, the role he played um, in my superintendency. So, any other questions? Chair? Yes. The only comment I would like to make is, I miss you, Terry. I know you're looking down on us. Thank you very much, Brian. I was thinking the exact same thing. Um, I do, uh, again, before we leave, uh, want to say goodbye to Ms. Franco. I, I know we had the time at the beginning of the meeting, but uh, we I, I think I speak for everybody, and I know I speak for Mr. Gillis, too, is that we've all enjoyed uh, your time here, and we're all better members and are better because of you. So thank you very much. With that, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, we will see you next Thursday, January 4th.